Howdy friends, this is Pelican Man bringing you another Magic the Gathering video. This time we're doing something a little different. Rather than playing through some Magic, playing through some leagues, talking about our plays, uh, we're going to go into a deeper dive of kind of the behind the scenes stuff of actually designing decks. So uh, what, what you're seeing here is a Death and Taxes list. It's kind of my stock standard Death and Taxes list. Four Giver of Runes, four Aether Vials, four Spirited Companion, four Stoneforge, four Thalia, four... Flicker Wisp, four Skyclave, four Solitude, single Caldera, Clouds of Kieran, and more of the Skyclaves, and two Lion Sash. And the mana base is whatever. We won't talk about that today. But yeah, this is my kind of stock list. This is where I kind of lean. This I might move around some things here and there or test something completely new, but like this is where I always kind of come back to at the moment. This is the list that I would play tomorrow at a big tournament, right? Playing through any leagues online, playing through my LGS, like I tend to mess around with the sideboard. These are kind of all the cards that I would be considering for the sideboard. I would pick 15 of these cards. What I'm going to talk about today is coming up with the ideal sideboard if I was attending a big event tomorrow, something I really wanted to kind of try hard and try and win with. Uh, this is how I would pick 15 of these 22. I'm also going to kind of talk about uh, this for a few other decks to kind of talk about a few different sideboarding plans but uh, we'll start with where we're comfortable we'll start with death and taxes so uh, i like march of otherworldly like currently for things like urza saga and wonder ups like ragavan and stuff the wandering Emperor is really good in kind of mid-rangey controlling matchups but it's also good against decks that are like trying to bolt on like hamathon and stuff just getting rid of a tapped creature mind senses are obviously good for titan and tron also happens to be good against yorg moth sanctifies good grave hate for like slower graveyard decks even against decks that are heavy graveyard it can do some things also just good at dodging removal the and relic board obviously good against any artifacts or enchantments we might come against rest in pieces the graveyard hose of the jour so if we're needing to fire things like dredge and living it really hard this is the card uh, kataki is for if we're expecting affinity just destroys it uh, when i run it i only run it as a one-off but you can run more obviously again this is my preferences as to what i would run Three Drowneth Magistrate for any of the Cascade decks. Two Baron and Forge, that is specifically for Ragavan and Fury. Two Phyrexian Revoker for Planeswalkers or activated abilities involved in combos like Heliod, Yorgmoth, and a Batiskull. Only a consideration in the sideboard because we're not running it main and because we might need life gain against specifically like Burn and Blitz. So I try to not go too high on my sideboard potential. 22 is pretty reasonable. We only have to trim like seven ish cards. Uh, so what I would do, I've already gone ahead and kind of worked out my numbers, but here is a Google sheet that I use. Uh, so I've already plugged in kind of all my numbers and done all my tweaking already. I'll go through it more in depth on the next uh, deck on Hammer Time. But basically I've worked out like, you know, it gets, so these, these are the matchups that I expect to see at my LGS on the regular. So if I was preparing for my LGS specifically, these are the matchups that I would focus on trying to optimize the sideboarding for. And then these decks are like either weirdo ones that need specific sideboarding or and or very popular decks in the meta game that we also need to consider. So if it was a magic online one, I would be more I would like weigh these heavier. If it's on my LGS, I would weigh these heavier. Obviously, the bigger events on my LGS have more than just our regular customers. They tend to have people coming from all around the area as well. So, you know, generally I would actually consider this whole list at the moment I'll consider this whole list and try and sideboard for the whole thing, but for the purpose of today, we're only going to really look at the matchups that I expect to see all the time, every time I play at my LGS. So like even in a bigger event, there will be people showing up with these decks at a bigger event because they regulate my LGS and they play these decks. So I've seen that like against Merktide, like I've trimmed it down so that seven cards are coming in, seven cards are coming out, so that there is no overlap. It's not like we want to bring in an extra card and we can't, it's not like we're trying to cut too many cards, whatever. I can like cleanly sideboard here, cleanly sideboard against footballs, cleanly sideboard in all of these matchups, right? So going back to the deck, it was, it involved cutting the Wandering Emperor, cutting the two Rest in Peace, cutting the Kataki, uh, cutting the Battle Skull and cutting the Revokers. Now, depending on what kind of metagame I'm expecting, like this also takes into account the fact that uh, I think specifically Mind Sensor is one of the more flexible slots, and I like it because Titan's so heavy in the metagame. Um, not that I expect to see it every time at my LGS, but it is back in the metagame in full force, and Tron is very popular, and so I really want to lean on Mind Sensor. 
if I was expecting like living in a dredge to be huge, I would want the rest in pieces. You know, if I was expecting blue light control uh, and Heliod to be up there, I would probably consider the revokers. But so that's taken into account as well. Um, with that said, like I'll move on to the, the hammer matchup and show you more specifically, uh, sorry, the hammer sideboarding talk and more specifically what I'm talking about. Okay. So next looking at hammer time, uh, this is, basically the list I've been playing recently, the three memory, three on top to uh, one paradise mantle. Uh, I was running two drum, there's three drum here. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, Shadow Spear, four hammer, two still shows gifts, four cigars, eight, three give of runes, four of sentinel, four stone forge, four paladin, one chip, one nail assist, one Keldra. Uh, there's actually 61 cards here at the moment because I wanted to look at the numbers and work out whether it's worth having four drum effects or the three. I uh, could potentially, you know, have three drums and no mantle, two drums and a mantle, or have three drums and a mantle and cut down to one Steel Shapes gift. So that's something I wanted to look at with like working out my sideboarding numbers. And then the sideboard, two March of Otherworldly Light, four Blacksmith Skill, two Spell Pierce, two Teferi, two Meddling Mage, three Lavinia. Uh, a land of the lost is like the relic effect i actually think this is the best effect but that's not for this video uh a pythian needle a manriki gusari and an emerical the aeon's torn uh the emerical is a weird one but it's just because mill is a terrible matchup and i actually say it's semi regulate my lgs so it was a consideration i wanted to make um everything else is kind of cards that have been stock in the sideboard at various points uh i don't have any prismatic kings or path to exiles because that's not really something i'm considering but let's look at these numbers and kind of work out how we'd want a sideboard for the matchups I was talking about at my LGS. So first looking at Merktide Regent, we would want to bring in four Blacksmith Skill. Uh, you can bring in March for uh, Regiment and Darcy. I don't think it's for this matchup. I think uh, you bring in you bring in March against like specifically other Saga decks in this sideboard. Going by like again going by Travis Brown sideboard plan like that's. That's the impression that I get. Uh, Spell Pierce could also come in, but again, like it's like Blacksmith Skills kind of performing the role. Anything you want to Spell Pierce is something is basically to protect your stuff. So, you know, Blacksmith Skills does the same job. Uh, and we can bring in the Lantern of the Lost just to, to try and fight the Merc Tide itself. Uh, and what we want to cut in the matchup is three of our Ornithopters. We leave in Memite because it can kill Ragavan. Uh, one drum effects and the Caldera. So you can see this is a clean five for five. Um, again, we actually want to like cut a card. So normally this drum wouldn't be here and that would be clean sideboarding. So that's pretty fine. Uh, let's look at the next matchup, Crashing Footfalls. So for Footfalls, Lavinia is the MVP. Uh, our game plan against them becomes protect the queen. Basically we bring in Lavinia and all the blacksmith skills. Uh, Teferi can also come in, not as necessary, but still pretty solid if we can stick one. Uh, you could bring in Spell Pierce, but I, it, I just don't think it's the matchup for it. Like, we can beat Rhinos, we can beat the Rhinos themselves, you know, it's not the worst. And Rhinos is a pretty reasonable matchup for us, I think. Um, we cut the Memnites, because they have no flies, basically, so the Ornithopters, we can attack, flash in a hammer and kill them with it. Uh, we cut all the drum effects, which, you know, would be the three drums. So maybe the mantle as well, we do cut out a seal shapes gift, so let's consider that. Uh, apparently we also cut the two gifts, so that kind of means that, you know, that extra card is irrelevant. Because we would be cutting it no matter what it is. Uh, and then we cut a nail assist. So that's a clean nine for nine. Pretty nice to see. So let's move on to the next matchup, which is the Hammer Time Mirror. So in the Hammer Time Mirror, we want our marches to deal with opposing sagas, hammers, whatever. Uh, we want the needle to hopefully punish whatever they're doing. Uh, spell Pierce to counter hammers coming in and them killing us, which is cool. And obviously the Manriki Gasari. This is like the main matchup that we'd want to run Manriki Gasari in the sideboard for. Uh, we'd want to cut the Nettle Cyst and all the Esper Sentinels is basically all the sideboarding we want to do. Um, so again, like whichever card, whether it's a drum or a gift comes out, doesn't matter because um, it's not getting involved in our sideboarding anyway, but we are boarding an extra card. Worth noting that we are like sideboarding an extra card, so we would need to cut something extra. 
So maybe that's a reason we don't include one of these cards in the sideboard. Uh, the next matchup we're going to talk about is Living End. So Living End, similar to Footfalls, we want to protect the Queen, we want to protect our Lavinia. Teferi is obviously very good. Uh, Land of the Lost to fight their graveyard is good. Meddling Mage could also be fine at naming Living End. So they're a consideration too. As far as what to cut, uh, we don't like the Esper Sentinels because us drawing extra cards means literally nothing to them. Uh, we cut the Paradise Mantle here because we want the drums specifically. We cut the two Steel Shapers Gifts and we cut the Reality Chip and the Nettle Cyst. So you can already see there's three too many cards coming in here. Um, this is a matchup where if we only had one Steel Shapers Gifts, we would actually be sideboarding even one less. Whereas if we cut the drum, um, it doesn't really affect our sideboarding them. So that's something to consider. Also, we just have way too many cards in the sideboard for this matchup. It is not a great matchup, so that is reasonable. Um, I mean, if we did run this sideboard, we could actually cut the Giver of Runes as well. But I actually don't hate leaving in the Giver of Runes in the matchup. Um, but again, like if, if we had this, we would actually probably cut the Giver of Runes as well and have pretty clean sideboarding. Um, so let's look at the next matchup, which is Tron. So against Tron, uh, Lavinia again, very good. Uh, I actually want to bring in some number of blacksmith skill. I think it's only two, uh, because they don't have a lot of hate for us, but they have like nature's claims, dismembers. So it, it is worth bringing some number of skill, I think. Um, bring in spell pierces as well. Not huge on spell pierce, especially because like kind of great is like the most annoying thing for us, but spell pierce deals with their planeswalk as well. Like, I mean, Blacksmith Skill could protect against, like, Khan Liberate, so, you know, um, Lavinia kind of deals with it all, and Blacksmith Skill could protect Lavinia better than Spell Pierce can, so maybe that's a reason to not even bother with Spell Pierce here. Um, we want the Piping Needle and nothing else, basically. Uh, we could potentially bring in all the Blacksmith Skill if we really want to, and the Spell Pierces, but I think that's overboarding for a matchup where we basically need to get under them. Uh, as far as what to cut, the Shadow Spear can come out, the Cyst can come out, the Chip can come out. Honestly, I almost want to say the Cauldron coming because we really need to just hammer kill. Uh, we want to leave in all of our drum effects and whatever. We can actually... I think we could reasonably cut Steel Shaper's Gifts, but I think it really helps with that combo kill. Um, and I actually kind of just want to cut Giver in the matchup as well. So that's a clean 8 for 8. Uh, next, we're going to look at the Yorgmoth matchup. So Needle's very good at turning off either Outland Liberator or Yorgmoth itself. Uh, marches are fine, it's just like taking out their creatures here and there. Um, blacksmith skill, uh, very good at dealing with any of their removal. Uh, it's a matchup where we kind of just want to get under them as well. Uh, so four Esper Sentinel can come out. Uh, we also got the Nettle Cyst, one Drum, and one Steel Shaper's Gift. Not sure how correct these numbers are, like we could potentially just like cut more Drums or cut more Gifts. Kind of go either way on that. Uh, but this is currently clean 7 for 7, so we're just going to leave that alone uh, and go on to the next matchup, which is Affinity. So for the Affinity matchup, uh, it's pretty obvious what's good. These are good. And the main Riki Gusari is good. Wherever that is, there it is. Everything else kind of doesn't do anything. Like Lavinia can counter like Memnites and Orthops later on, but it's whatever. Spell Pierce can counter their Thought Cast, their, like if they have Reality Heist. Um, but also they can generally just pay for it by the time they're doing that, I think, normally. Meddling Mage has nothing, like, great to name, because they're not a combo deck. Um, also worth mentioning, against Yorgmoth, they're bringing the Meddling Mage, because they can just tutor for the Yorgmoth with spells that aren't named Yorgmoth. Um, yeah, Land Loss doesn't do anything against Affinity, it's very, whatever. Blacksmith Skill, like, they don't have enough interaction, I think we can beat them on a fair plan, we don't need to hammer kill them. Like, we can just beat the Snot out of them with Caldera, so it's whatever. Uh, and as far as what comes out, uh, it's pretty easily just the Esper Sentinels, and that's like a pretty clean 4 for 4. So, looking at our Excel sheet, sorry, our Google sheet, uh, we can see that we've kind of got one too many cards coming against Hammer Time, and we've got three too many cards coming against Living End. Now, I kind of did this math uh, preparing to play at my LGS last night, and I ended up keeping the Manriki, and even though, like, this sideboarding kind of makes clear we want we don't want the Manriki. Uh, I guess Affinity, like, we kind of don't have enough to board in, so it is nice having it for that. The reason I went with it is because I knew two players were on Affinity. 
there could potentially be a third, potentially a fourth, I think. If, like, the stars aligned horribly, there could be up to four affinity players in the meta randomly. Um, and there was... The other Hammer Time player at my LGS has been playing it, like, every week for the last, like, however many weeks. So I was pretty confident that those... That, that might shop as well as yeah the two to four affinity players so i kept name reiki in my board for that reason um otherwise it's clear that we have too much going on against living end which is fine because living end's a tough matchup but uh also like i kept saying like here are matchups where we like need to like fight you know like hammer time yorgmoth and tron and meddling mages doesn't do it so i don't think meddling mage is the right medical so i ended up deciding against the meddling mages for that reason uh the reason you would want meddling mages specifically is like like in double creativity which is a combo match where you can name the combo piece amulet titan where you can name the titan itself even though they have backup wing cons i think it's still good enough uh and that's really it for the top of the meta so i think meddling mage like is potentially fine like it's potentially one of the better weapons to titan but apparently titan's not a bad matchup with the current plan so if that is to be believed then uh we don't need meddling mage uh, which still leaves me at 17. Uh, obviously, unless we expect to face Mill specifically, which is our worst matchup by far, the Emiracles are relevant. Uh, we have, we could potentially have two Mill players showing up at our LGS. Uh, potentially three, I guess, but they're not crazy enough to like, like one of them plays at the, the store regularly. The other one was regular for a, about a month or two, but hasn't shown up recently. And the other one's just a friend of mine who, like, if they show up, might be playing Mill. So, uh, I kind of just went, I'm willing to lose the Mill matchup. And, like, I, th I think Mill's, like, hated on enough, like, I didn't super expect to see it. So, I cut the Emrakul and just went, whatever, we're not considering Mill today. Because, you know, sideboarding is what it is. Uh, so, we need to cut one more card. And there's still one too many cards wanting to come against Living in. So, that's kind of where we where we went looking um, and the thing that made most sense to me was that if we wanted the Manriki Gasari, like this is basically, if, if we don't have the Manriki, this is the cyborg Travis was running. Uh, this is the cyborg I tested. Obviously, it was Relic Eternal Land. I just think Lenten's better. So, like, something has to come out for the Manriki to come in. It wants to be in the Living End matchup. Uh, so, I ended up just going. Teferi's a three drop. Uh, the other matchups is good in a control matchups where I, th I actually feel favored kind of basically because the build now has the giver runes and stuff uh less of these less drum effects um i actually just kind of went you know we don't really need two teferis like the one's fine and again it's coming in against like the cascade decks where like it's not actually crazy against the cascade decks so i actually trimmed the second teferi and was kind of really okay with that decision so if we change that here uh, which was just these two matchups, which also like looking at it now, like now you can potentially, cause it's one Teferi, two Teferis against Merktide, like it's kind of overkill and kind of hard to make resolve, but one Teferi to just slot in against Merktide, it's kind of okay. Um, I still don't like love it against, but like it is something you could do, right? But now looking at our numbers, uh, that cleaned up our living end numbers pretty, pretty well. Without, like, this isn't, like, a house against Living End, right? Like, it's only good if we're on the draw or if we slow them down a turn or whatever or if they just happen to be a turn slower, so I don't hate doing that. Uh, now our footballs match up. We're currently boarding out one too many cards, which is really easy to just look at and remember that it's cutting all of our drum effects and all of our gift effects. So, um, like, that just means we get to leave one of them in. So, looking at it, like, it's kind of whatever... Um, I think specifically, like, against footballs, we do actually like leaving in the, uh, the Paradise Mantle. So, it actually looks like this is our three actual drum and our two actual Steel Shapes gifts, which, again, is the, like, extra card we're running. So, which, like, if we look, it doesn't really affect anywhere else. So, the decision seems kind of irrelevant. Uh, looking deeper into, when I looked deeper into these matchups, it was actually correct to just keep in two gifts because of like some other numbers somewhere else that I was able to clean up. Uh, so now it's only the Hammer Time matchup that's that's weird and we're bringing in one too many cards, which again is the main Riki that we've decided to bring. Uh, so you could like only bring in one PS if you wanted to, or you could just cut something extra. Uh, so again, this is how we were sideboarding. Looking at it all, like, you know, you can kind of do whatever. Sorry, let me just take this drum out of here because we decided that's what we were doing. Um, you know, you could 
potentially cut the paradise mail. I think the paradise mail is good. You could potentially cut a drum because you don't need to be as fast. Cut a gift because, like, you know, what are you really tutoring for? I mean, it's, it's good. Um, you could cut the reality chip, honestly. Like, it's kind of a slower, grindy one. Like, Travis said he liked the reality chip in the mirror, which is super reasonable. Uh, like, if one player resolves chip and the other doesn't, I th whoever hammers first is going to win generally. If there's no way to do with the hammer, but uh, otherwise, chip's good. So, you know, it's kind of. There's kind of a few options here. Like, could just be a drum because you don't need to be like breakneck speed. Could be the mantle. You know, there's this could even be the Keldra, honestly. Keldra's really good in the mirror post board, though, so it's probably not the Keldra. But uh, what I'm saying is there's some flexibility, you know, like you can kind of go with, yeah, the pierce, the chip, the gift, the drum, the mantle. You know, it's probably potentially just the mantle. I'm not 100% sure. But everything else ends up really clean there, so. That's how we worked out the sideboard for Hammer Time. So let's move on to the next deck, which uh, will be Wurza. So I'm going to have to just real quick go over what this deck actually is to talk about how we're going to sideboard with it. Uh, it's Urza, Thopter to Foundry combo, an infinite combo. There's a lot of high artifice, so Thopter to Foundry sort of make. Uh, with War of Inventions, had like kind of a control prison element to it where you get to like react to things. Uh, so we've got a bunch of, like, Moots and Prototypes the Ramp, we've got Reality Chip for Grind, Goblin Engineer to help find, like, Sword of the Meeks, uh, you've got Wellspring is, like, draw a card, uh, Chromatic Stars to just draw cards, and we've got, like, some Tutor Targets, you know, the Spellbomb, Python Needle, Pirate Spellbomb, Soul Guide Land, Shadow Sphere, because we are running Sagas, so we can, like, make Contracts and, like, beat fairly, and then Baubles, because we're a Degenerate Artifact deck, and Potable Holds a Tutor Target, and Witch Wells a Card Advantage card, so, uh, this is um kind of a combo control deck so going to the sideboard all of these are one of were targets so void mirror tells the void for like cascade decks or like i mean the void mirror is also for elementals decks uh, and scenario bridge obviously for decks that want to attack top rob for decks with creatures that want to do stuff damage sphere for unfair mana decks and storm decks cage specifically for yorg buff at the moment although obviously it catches like some graveyard decks uh, two wear tear for artifact enchantments, to fairy for control and also like you know bouncing stuff. Uh, two alpine moons for saga decks mostly, but also Titan and Tron. Fluster Storm uh, mostly for the Cascade decks. Aether Gust specifically for Titan flexes into other matchups. Counter spells is a generic catch all. Mystical Dispute for the control decks, and then marches and prismatic ending is just kind of generic removal. So we'll go over the these next two decks like much, much quicker than we went through uh, the Hammer Time like deep kind of dive into it. Um, and basically what I ended up doing initially when I played this in my LGS uh, like a whole week ago was I just kind of went and, dra and took every second copy of everything out and that put us to a clean 15. <laughs> so I actually did roughly work out the numbers and like this ended up pretty clean uh the reason that there was two in the sideboard to start with of like basically all of our known creature spells was because these are our tutor targets these want to be one ofs and the other ones like we're trying to draw into them but why i went for one of each was because like if we want to deal with saga we've got march and alpine moon if you want to deal with like a ragavan we've got ending and march you know everything's kind of performing double duty so running a bunch of one ofs didn't really hurt but uh if we just throw all those cards back in, let's quickly look at the Merktide matchup. Uh, Teferi's potentially fine. Uh, we want Dispute. We probably want Counter Spells, fight Counter Spell Wars. Flustorm's also kind of fine for Counter Spell Wars. Uh, we could bring in like Marches and Endings for like Ragamans and Darcy's. Probably would rather just Ending, but we could bring them all in. Uh, and none of our one of targets are really what we're after. As far as what we cut, we like Rally Chip, we like Portable Hole, we love our Moon Snares. Um, kind of everything looks kind of okay here, honestly. We definitely don't need Pythy Needles. Price Bomb's fine, Aether Spell Bomb's fine. Uh, we don't need Shadow Spear. Saga Land's actually fine. All's good. So we can just like trim a bunch of the kind of draw effects as well. Uh, they should have no way to exile our Graveyard. So the Sword of these kind of safe. Although they might have uh, Pact of Negations, so that's a reason to kind of leave the second sword of the Meek in. And then we like Reality Chip. 
Goblin Engineer's probably likely to die, so you can, like, potentially cut them as well. Um, but, like, it's just such a good kind of value card, and, like, their burn spells are so, like, average otherwise that maybe they trim some, so you could see, like, four of these cards wanting to come out. So that's something to remember. Uh, looking at Crashing Footfalls, we want Chalice. We want uh, Aether Gust is fine against Crashing Footfalls. We don't want marches or endings, there's no point like just removing rhinos one by one. Uh, Fluster Storm's obviously good, counter spell's fine, dispute's fine, fairy's fine. So again we're seeing like all these doubled up counter spells kind of stepping on each other's toes. Uh, as far as what we cut, again we can cut Minko Wellspring. We can only the Sword of the Meeks together um, because we're scared of back to negation. Chip can come out, Needles can come out, uh, Shadow Sphere can probably come out too. Aether Spell was probably fine. Um, Pirate Spell Bomb's not great. Star can come out. Slog Guide Lane can come out. And Witch Wall can come out. So we're seeing, like, again, like, we saw that this kind of package, there's too, too many in the previous matchup. So again, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, next we've got Hammer Time. All of these cards are great against Hammer Time. These cards are great against Hammer Time. These cards are great against Hammer Time. Uh... Uh, and Snary Bridge is probably fine against Hammer Time too. That's what comes out. Really Chip can come out. Wellspring can come out. Uh, needles, we kind of want to keep at least one in, but we can trim one if need be. Pirate's fine. Earth Bomb's good. Well can come out. So that can come out. Um, oh, against Rhinos, this should have come out, but that's whatever. We can cut a Sword of the Meek, and like we can cut a Chromatic Star if we want to. So there's too, too many cards coming in. We're again seeing this congestion with having four of this effect, which is kind of what we expected. Uh, next we have Living End. So Living End we want Chalice. Probably want Torpor Orb. It's like the idiot that they cycled to flop an artifact. Oh, uh, maybe we don't actually. Uh, we want Void Mirror for sure. I don't think we want Aether Gust. Uh, we want Flustomp though. Uh, we could potentially bring Dispute, we could bring the Counter Spells, we could bring Teferi. Grafting Scage doesn't do anything against it, which sucks. Uh, Bridge is potentially fine. And that's about it. And as far as what comes out, again, like, we can cut all of our kind of fair stuff. We don't need Needles against them. Soul Guide wants to stay in, obviously. Uh, Shadow Speed could potentially stay in, but by default we probably want to cut it. Spell Bomb's fine. We can trim a star, we cut the Portable Hole. Uh, and again, we'll leave in the Sword of the Meeks, so... That's looking a bit cleaner, but again, there is some, like, tweaking we could do. So, like, again, this congestion of counter spells is probably where we want to be looking. Uh, next matchup is Yorg Moth. Um, Grafting's Cage, of course. Aether Gust. We want... Um, Torpor doesn't do anything. Serum Bridge is whatever. Fossil is going to be a counter spell. We can bring counter spells, and that's about it for the Yorg Moth matchup. We could bring in marches, potentially endings. Let's let's pretend we're going to consider bringing these in. Um, Reality chip might be fine against them. Probably want to cut a wellspring. I don't think they have grave hate, except for like endurance. So maybe we can get away with leaving in the like trimming sword of the meek. But I think we get this. Like we've got to keep in all of our combo. Uh, it's problems fine. Sogar lands fine. Portable holes fine. Uh, we can trim a star as always. Pirate Spell and Killing a Dork is potentially worth keeping in. Shadow Spear we can potentially trim because we're not trying to be too fair. Needles are really good. Uh, Witching Well can come out. I mean, looking at this, like, I'm tempted to just say, like, this is how we would sideboard, right? Which puts uh, points in the favor of counter spells, but again, we could, like, leave them out to bring in some of these, which were, like, another point of contention we had. Uh, next is the Tron matchup. So Void Mirror can come in. Uh, Damping Sphere, Alpine Moons. Uh, I like counter spells and wear tears could be fine. So there's those eight. Uh, again, we're going to cut a bunch of the fair stuff. So all the makes will leave in because of specifically Khan Liberator's down tick. Trim that, trim that, trim that. Needles are good. Portable hole. Uh, we can probably just cut portable hole. We can cut pirate spell with an the spell bomb and soul guard lantern. But again, like, if need be, it's pretty easy to just, like, leave in a Pirate Spell Bomb or, or Chromatic Star and stuff. Uh, so none of these were really contentious points. So our last matchup of the ones we're looking at for today was Affinity. So we got Affinity, Cages, whatever, Torp Robes. Uh, turns off, like, Thought Monitor, but I don't think we want it. And Snary Bridge, we want. Teferi's, whatever, Fossil's, whatever. 
We want all the endings and marches if we have them. We want the wear tears. Count spells too slow. Elf by Moon takes out Saga. Um, and I'm not really interested in these. So again, they're pretty fast. So we can cut these. We can trim a Saw the Me, trim a Shadow Spear, uh, like trim Witching Well, Soul Guide. Needles are good. We can like trim a star. Um, so again, we're seeing contention here. So looking at all that, after all that, if we were if we were doing it properly, uh, what we would do is we saw contention where these four slots want to be two slots, and uh, contention with these slots as well. They're like basically anti counter spell counter spells. So we would probably want we want to cut two of these and apparently four of these. Um, I actually normally like running a single wear tear personally as a weird choice. I have sometimes run two, but I could see just running one. So if we trim that, then we need to cut two from here and three from here, which I think is super reasonable. Which if we went if we went in deep, we would eventually see a matchup where we want to bring in like one of these and not the other, and like uh, we would find out where the tension is. I think March is probably better, although we do have like we can make like all five colors potentially for ending. And we're less likely to be able to pitch white cards to March. Uh and like we've got Alpine Moon to deal with sagas. So there might be a matchup where like these come in to deal with sagas, but we actually don't want these, you know? But I would say it's probably more likely that this is the case. And then like counter spells are kind of generic catch-all. We're running sagas, so double blues harder, so I could see not wanting that in the board. And that's just a matter of like trimming one other card somewhere, which would honestly probably the fairies like seem to only be coming in against like counter spells and disputes kind of doing the same role, but like this sticks around and about stuff. So you would see whether like, you know, there's a matchup where Teferi's relevant other than that, which like Cascade decks, I suppose. So probably, probably this to fight Cascade better. I don't know. But that's how we would work out Cyborg for Wurza. So let's get on to the last deck we're going to look at today in Nahiri Boon. So for anyone who's watched like enough of my channel before, you might have seen me playing Nahiri Boon earlier. Uh, so the basic premise of the deck is using Cleansing Wildfire and Boom Bust as like land structure thing. So we've got a bunch of lands that can kind of dodge this. So we've got four Rust Veil Bridge and four Flagstones. These are indestructible and these replace themselves with planes. So if we use Cleansing Wildfire on one of them, uh, if we use it on Flagstones, we get to ramp. If we use it on, well, if we use it on either, we get to ramp. Uh, we get to draw a card. So that's cool. So it ramps from two into four. Uh, and if we use Boom Bust, we get to destroy destroy one of our lands and one of our opponent's lands, which ends up just being a two-mana Stone Rain effect. Uh, we can also technically target an Arid Mesa and hold priority and pop the Arid Mesa. The opponent's land will still be a legal target, so it will still go off, but our Arid Mesa won't get destroyed because it's no longer there. Uh, so this is like also kind of like old-school Sun and Moon adopted into the kind of modern age. So we've got, like, Endings as removal, so we can run, like, Chalice, but still have one owner removal. Also, Spikefield Hazard, which doubles as our 24th land. Uh, Talisman is, like, a fifth way to ramp into turn four, uh, ramp into the format on turn three. Grip Parts is, like, a generic answer that's replacing, like, Lightning Helix. Pillage is just, like, more land destruction. Uh, and then our Wind Cons are Nahiri's, Chandra's, and Furies. Fury, obviously, just an insane removal spell that we can play for free while we're kind of setting up our own game plan. Chandra's just Chandra, and Nahiri gets the Emrakul. Uh, also, because of Solitude existing, Nahiri getting Emrakul isn't going to win every game because they can just like Solitude the Emrakul, so Nahiri can then like get a Fury after or something. So the cards in the sideboard we want, this is like kind of a prisony kind of red-white control deck, so four Leyline of Sanctity for like burn matchups and stuff, two Wrath of God for creature heavy matchups, uh, four Rest in Peace for graveyard decks, to boil for counter spell matchups, for Ragavan for like any matchups where we want to board out Chalice, basically, like helps get in under Tron or like control decks, whatever, and two wear tear potentially for like just general removal. So there's only 18 cards we're considering in sideboard here, so this is actually much easier because like I played this deck enough to have like really, really fine tuned the cards that I think are relevant. So we've just got to work out what three cards we want to cut. Uh, so against Merktide. We are likely to want to bring in some number of rest in peace, and that's really it. And as far as what we cut, we want to leave in like Chalice is like a main way to deal with Ragavan. Prismatic Ending deals with Ragavan and Darcy fine. Spikefield has deals with them both fine. Uh, so it's potentially just rip apart or pillage. Uh, I think the land structure plans less likely to be relevant against like such a grindy deck. Oh, sorry, we also want to bring in the boils. 
so we would like cut pillages and we could like like cut a talisman and a rip apart potentially to neaten that up um, ideally i would just do this probably though so there's one extra card in all this nonsense so we'll remember that uh, next we've got crashing footfall so zekwa chalice is good but we can potentially bring in ragavan if we want to uh leyland probably doesn't do a lot wrath i think wrath's fine against them boil's good they're actually kind of blue heavy and uh, yeah we can bring in the ragavans i think all the land structure is pretty nice uh fury's fine not like crazy but it's fine Chelsea Rub is good. Rip Apart basically doesn't do anything against them. So we would want to cut all the Rip Aparts and then like probably just Pillages or Furies or something. Uh, Pending maybe just like only takes out like one thing. I would say we'd probably cut Pillage and that actually ends up pretty clean. So it makes us think that the cards we want to cut are elsewhere in the sideboard. Uh, next we've got Hammer Time which none of our sideboard really seems to be for except for like these cards which i think is fine because our main deck's probably well enough equipped to handle it uh so obviously because of saga we really like these this is good this is good this is fine uh this could potentially come out uh rip parts are really really good pillages are totally reasonable furies are good so we don't actually have a lot we want to cut in the matchup it's honestly probably just like the talisman and like two chandras so one of these cards is kind of uh potentially able to be cut pretty easily which i'm just going to go out on a limb and say it's probably the second wear tear again um just a thing i do of like running a single wear tear on my sideboards randomly so i'm going to cut that now and keep moving forward uh, next we have living end so obviously your rest of pieces are good against living end uh wraths are fine against living end against the current list uh boil might be fine so let's consider that uh we might also want leyline of sanctity for their griefs so that's 10 cards that can potentially come in like even the boils could potentially come in but i think that's probably overboarding oh whatever let's put it in the pile for now uh furies don't seem great we could potentially pitch it early and then get it back off the living end chelsea are obviously good wildfires are fine they only have one like one basic normally uh we don't want we don't want any of our pendings uh we also don't want any of our ripper parts uh we also don't really want pillage so actually that kind of could be pretty clean huh yeah it's looking pretty clean but we know we want to cut like two of these cards almost definitely i like the ragavans and i like the one wear tear which means what we probably we probably leave in the pillage and just like trim the talisman the spike field yeah that's probably what we do so we, we again we know that two of these cards are what we're going to cut almost definitely uh, for York Moth. Uh, so, Ley Lines are pretty sure they don't do anything. Wraths are kind of not great, but we want to bring in Rest in Peace. So, Wraths are kind of good alongside Rest in Peace, funnily enough. Uh, this looks good. Pillages can probably come out. Uh, Rip Parts are fine. I think what we have to do is just like bring in our Rest in Peace and hope it, and like use our removal to kill our undying stuff with a Rest in Peace in play. And like we could, we just want to cut Chalice, huh? So we'd, let's say we'd leave in pillage, we'd cut chalices and like the talisman, which like already looking at this, I think it's giving me an idea of how it's sideboard, but we'll go through another matchup or two before kind of committing. Uh, so next is Tron. Tron is kind of easy. We want Ragavans and like probably this. Uh, that's about it. Uh, we would want to cut the chalices and then like the spike field hazard, even though pending is like not the best tagging an early like I, I suppose actually what we probably want to do is like play draw like chalice versus ending if we're on the play we can resolve a chalice on one on turn two to turn off like all their stars and spheres and if we're on the draw we just want pending to be able to like hit a map on turn one probably so the sideboard is affected there so what i'm thinking is that Ley line, one ley line and one rest in peace so we go three of each of those because again the ragamans are pretty clean to like bring over the chalices so we definitely want those as four of i think they can get away with these as three elves uh, let's look at the last matchup which is affinity which ley line and rest in peace don't affect we'll quickly look so we we probably bring in the wrath of gods just for the hell of it uh, ragamans aren't great and we just want the wear tear and that's like it for affinity but thankfully like everything's good against affinity like these are all really good I mean, chalices aren't, like, crazy. We can, like, cut talisman. 
and then like two chalice maybe to do that little sideboarding. So if we go back to the matches where ley lines and rips are relevant. So against Living End, we probably wanted both, right? Because we want to fight their graveyard and we want to fight their griefs. So let's go all the way back to Merktide where we don't want Leyline, but we do want Rip. So it's Merktide, we want Rips, we want Boils. Uh, I can't remember if we wanted the Rats or not. Um, we're like, even though I literally just talked about this, I'm like, I can't remember. So like, so we can cut the Talisman. I, mean, I think like we could potentially bring in our own Ragavans, but that's kind of whatever. Like we can do that and cut the Chalices, but I think we would want to leave the Chalices in for the matchup. Um, and then like, you know, probably just cut four pillage and like two rip parts because you can still like sorcery speed do with ragavans and darcy's that seems fine not the not necessarily the cleanest for this deck but but you get the idea i think the uh thing to note with like that nahiri boom list was like you know i think some of those those trimmings were like pretty flexible again like that list has so many like forms or whatever the flex slots like the two one ofs and just like trimming here and there so that uh that's why i wanted to cover that because that sideboard is like very heavy like four ofs and stuff when i initially start putting it together whereas like my words list is like very one obby and then like we've got death and taxes which is like kind of a lot of three ofs like there are a lot of death tax sideboards that are like just full three ofs and mine's like pretty close to that where i've got these cards that are all three ofs and these cards that are all two ofs and then we've got hammer time which like the new revelation of the sideboard is like the quad blacksmith skill with like, you know, these kind of tutor targets hanging out and like two ofs otherwise. And obviously my like change is going to a one-off to fairy, even though there's no real upside to it as a one-off, like it's really hard to find as a one-off, but I think it just cleans up the sideboarding numbers. And also like looking at, at how that Nahiri boom sideboard plan kind of went, like, that get that could go potentially deeper and the numbers could change as we look at more matchups like the matches we looked at there was there was kind of not enough matchups where like the ley lines were relevant or the rips were relevant so as we get deeper into the archetypes we would start to kind of clean that up but basically that's how i like build my sideboard for a competitive event is like i start with like 20 cards and whittle it down based on like trying to find the cleanest numbers possible for the most number of matchups obviously also keeping in mind that like Things like this, right? I, I want this man Riki Gosari because I expect to see Affinity in Hammer Time. Or like, I was considering Emrakul because I maybe want to get a my mill matchup cleaner. And then, like, looking at Death and Taxes, how currently I'm on Aven Mind Sensor, where, like, if Titan falls out of the meta again, like it has in the past, like when Saga first came out, it jumped up and then immediately got hated back down. Uh, when it, when Saga first got printed and Titan was up, I was on Mind Sensor, and then when it got hated back down, the Mind Sensor came out again. Like, that was a very Titan-specific choice that I made. But yeah, you don't, you know, by all means, like, build sideboards however you want. I just thought it'd be interesting to kind of talk about how I like to build my sideboard in case it might help anyone out there kind of work out their sideboarding. It's not an exact science. Like, this is something I watched a Jeff Hoogland video on, uh, which I'll link down in the description uh, I should have probably mentioned at the start of the video, my bad. Uh, Jeff Hoogland talks about it like a, a very, very similar concept and I've kind of taken that for my own and kind of adapted it in my own way. So, you know, even just the thought process of it might be something that interests you and like gives you ideas as to like, maybe you adapt on it yourself and find a, a way to build a side what's more comfortable for you. But uh, I hope this was at least interesting to listen to. Thank you all for watching. Uh, and as always, until next time, bye bye